I think they're vain, stupid, and incredibly self-centered. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. I'll turn it off. Actually, I had a really fun day today. I have a, I have a new friend, and he lives in my neighborhood. We were doing uh, background work together, and it was funny because he and I were the only normal people. We were rolling our eyes about everybody else the whole day. And I was like, oh, this is my new best friend. Mm -hmm. And we were on the bus back to the city because we were in, um, I don't know, somewhere in New Jersey. We're in the bus back to the city, chatting away. And uh, I said, what part of the town do you live in? He's like, oh, I live in these buildings. I was like, oh, I live in the building in front of those buildings. So we literally live. I could see if I look. Yeah, if I look out my window, I can see his apartment from my window Mm -hmm. pretty much. So. Uh, we were like, great, let's go to lunch. And we've been friends ever since. He's he's my new, uh, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of my gays over the years because they've moved all over the country, all over the world. I find that like people, it's so funny. It's like there was a time that people would come from their small towns where they were not accepted for being gay and they'd come to New York, you know, where it has a huge gay scene, a huge gay population. Everybody accepts everybody here. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's some discrimination, but it's not like everywhere else in the country. Mm-hmm. But now- that everywhere else in the country is kind of opening their eyes to all different types of people, you know, and a lot of my friends that came here because they were discriminated against in their town. Now their towns are like having their own gay pride parade. So they're like, okay, well time to go back. Right. So, I don't need to live in this shithole. I can live in another shithole. I can, that's yeah, I can live in another less shithole. It's expensive and, to live in that shithole than this shithole. That's the thing. This shithole has become a very expensive shithole. So now they can move back to their, normal little town where everybody is suddenly accept not only accepting of gays, but like, where are the gays? We need more gay best friends here. Mm-hmm. So they've all moved back. It's so weird. So I was, you know, I was in the market for a new friend anyway. And then, you know, you know me, but if he's gay, I'm even more interested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so I have a new gay best friend. And uh, so we spent the day together. Just we go on Skipping these walkabouts. Down the street. You skip and well, hold hands, and and well, what's it's funny you would say that because when we both dis- <laughs> we both discovered our love of karaoke, we <sighs> held hands like children and jumped mm-hmm. up and down, and be like, "You love karaoke, I love karaoke. We have to go to karaoke." Oh my god! So it was, we were really excited about that. But no, we've hung out a bunch now. Like we're spending Christmas together. We have a whole plan. And he goes to theater with Joe. They're they're best friends now too. Mm-hmm. But I realize it's time to start introducing him to some of my other friends. So some of my friends were in the neighborhood today. So we met up and I introduced everybody to everybody. And yeah, it was I just had a very social day, which is very unlike me because, you know, since COVID, I was like, I, I don't I never needed to leave the house food shop and home. Right. That's all I need. Did you go skipping with a mask on, though? I did. I always oh, okay. I keep a mask on. Yeah. I What I do now, because everybody is so freaked out about Omicron, but it's really Delta. That's the killer. Like Omicron, the symptoms are very mild, even if you're unvaccinated, like Omicron, I don't think will kill you. Delta will. Um, so but there's, there's numbers are starting to go up again here in New York, like everywhere else in the country. So my new thing now is I wear a mask. If I'm outdoors, I wear two masks if I'm indoors. And, and my friends make fun of me and I don't care. The CDC came out today to say we don't know if it's as bad or not as bad yet. We haven't made that decision. So they really don't know yet because it's spreading right. too damn fast to figure it out. That's the right. problem. It's everywhere. Yeah. And some more restaurants and some more Broadway shows announced just today that they would be closing for a couple of days and um, a couple of other People uh, that I know who've been going to the theater, like, you know, I'm sick. I went to my doctor, got the COVID test, waiting to hear. Well, the Rockettes canceled four shows. Yep. It's not like they can make those up. <laughs> you can't make them up after the holidays. Right. That's a very good point. Listen, you got to think about it. the Rockettes. There's a lot of those types of things that are just uh, holiday time specific. Mm-hmm. You know, once New Year's Day is gone, like nobody's going to the Rockettes in February. No, so they can't make it up. They're just going to eat that money. And last yeah, it's, year it's, they didn't have right. it. So They didn't have it because of COVID, right? But it's it's the Christmas Spectacular. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. You can't do the Christmas Spectacular on Valentine's Day. No, so they're going to lose all that money. And I heard they canceled a Broadway show, like in the middle of the Broadway show last night. They said, act two. Oh, wait, stop. Everybody's got to leave. Yes. In fact, it's funny you would say that my boyfriend was at the theater this week. And they stopped the production 
like dead in the middle of the production because a man in the front row had taken his mask down. Really? And I guess one of the yep, one of the actors had seen it, told on him. Somebody got up and said, uh, I'm sorry, we need to stop the production. And they looked around and they said, you know, OK, you guys, you, you on it? Yeah, we're on it. We got it. And it's like and Joe was thinking that there was like something. My boyfriend, Joe, was thinking like something's going on, a, a crime, a criminal. Mm-hmm. They just discovered a serial a killer fire, sitting here somewhere, whatever. a fire or something. Everybody started to panic. It was just a guy in the front row because where this theater was, if you're sitting in the front row, you're actually pretty close to the actors. So a guy in the front row had his mask down and they walked over and they said, we're telling you once, put your mask up and keep it up or we're kicking you out of here. Mm. Like they stopped the production to say that Good for them. And and the, what what they do now, and it's it's a little distracting. You're paying a lot of money for the for your theater ticket. But the entire production, the entire time you're sitting in the theater, there are ushers walking up and down the aisles back and forth, checking to make sure everybody has their masks up. Will they tell them if they don't wear it right? If they were. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the guy had it. This guy in the front row had it pulled down to his chin. He had it around his chin. Yeah, chin bra. And then and then there was somebody else that had it pulled down. There's another night had it pulled down and their nose was showing and mm-hmm. they walk over with a sign that says mask up <laughs> now. And either you do it or they shut the production down. I'm watching because I always watch 90 Day Fiance. And now I'm watching 90 Day Fiance the other way. And I guess they recorded it during COVID. There's one mom on the show who wears a mask, not over her nose, just over her mouth. And I fast forward through that part because it drives me insane. It's all I can focus on. And you know that the camera people who have their masks up all the way are looking at her and they're well aware and no one says anything to her. Because they want it to be better television. They want it to be somebody that is annoying and disturbing. Mm -hmm. I I just, I got to fast forward. I can't, I can't deal with it. Um, So today, Spider-Man came out. Well, it came out last night. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, To Tom Holland and Zendaya. Yeah. So my son is like the biggest Marvel fan in the world. So he bought tickets a month ago. Oh, wow. For Spider-Man. Because he can't wait. He he wow. he went out bought a Spider-Man shirt. I mean, he's all for it. It the the movie is tonight at seven o'clock. He's already on the <laughs> he he left already to get there in time to sit and wait for this movie. So today I read the spoiler and Uh-oh. it was killing me not to tell him what the spoiler was in the movie, but I didn't. Is the spoiler about well, tell me. Okay, well, just first of all, if, if you're listening right now, pause or fast forward because I want to know what the spoiler is because I will not be seeing this Spider-Man movie this week. I'm going to wait till it comes out on HBO or TV or whatever. So this will be out there. I would like you to now spoil the movie for me, please. Okay, you know, in the first Spider-Man, when Uncle Ben died. Yeah. So that's the, the driving force behind Spider-Man that Uncle Ben died. So that's a Explain big, that to people who don't really know Spider-Man. Spider-Man got bit by a spider, a radioactive spider. He can shoot webs out of his hands. Uncle Ben got robbed on the street. His uncle, he lived with his uncle and aunt. Mm-hmm. And his uncle was caught up in a robbery on the street. And they shot him and he died in Spider-Man's hands. So he died right, right. then. It's a big thing. Aunt May is really close to Spider-Man. And he, she's uh, through all the series and all that. So... This Spider-Man, Aunt May dies. Oh. So I guess it's a, you know, you have to bring tissues to Spider-Man because you're going to cry. So Mm. I knew the whole time. And and I said, I know the spoiler. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what it is and ruin it for you, even though. And he said, is it that Aunt May died? And I was like, no. (laughs) <laughs> it's not he said i kind of have that feeling because it i don't know i, I kind of saw it in the previews it kind of looks that way yeah so that's the big spoiler but you know what I, it's not really a big spoiler because people don't go to those movies anymore for the storyline just nobody does because if you think about it there's been so many articles written about this they make these movies mostly 
for foreign audiences because that's where the bulk of their money comes from. They do well in America. They absolutely do. But once it leaves this country and it goes especially to China, that's where they make the bulk of their money. Chinese audiences and a lot of non-American audiences just want to see blow shit up, blow shit up, blow shit up. So what you'll see is less of a storyline or storylines that make no sense whatsoever because they're not really interested in following a narrative. They just want more opportunities to blow shit up, blow shit up, blow shit up. And my favorite example of this that I always give is Iron Man. If you watch Iron Man 1, and then watch Iron Man 2 and 3, like in a row, Mm -hmm. it is really obvious. In fact, Iron Man 1 is practically a rom-com, you know what I mean? And then there's like some superhero stuff that goes on around it. Iron Man 2, there's no real story. It makes absolutely no sense. You have no idea what's going on, but it's a lot of like jumping out of planes and into stuff and stuff being a lot of that action. By number three, I don't even think there's any dialogue. It's literally just blow shit up for two and a half hours. And then at some point, I think somebody says something at some point, but not really even. No, <laughs> you know every, what I mean? it's every, less and less. <laughs> every movie now has gone a spoiler ever since M. Night Shyamalan created the big, huge spoiler at the end. That's mm-hmm. what especially Marvel. Marvel's got to do that. That's what keeps people around. So like. Ghostbusters had a really big thing at the end of that, Mm -hmm. a spoiler, and now Spider-Man has a spoiler. The new um, Boba Fett that's coming out on Disney Plus has a huge spoiler, and nobody knows what it is. That's why when you watch the new previews for Boba Fett, it looks really bad because they're only showing you scenes from the half of the the first episode because everybody's saying there's going to be a baby whatever the hell in the first one that's Mm. you know like a baby yoda but it's going to be a whatever a baby animal that you're going to fall in love with so they're not showing that they're not spoiling that but spider-man's got this huge thing at the end and it i guess it makes grown men cry so yeah, but I'm I'm saying like I just yes, it's a it's a moment and it's sad, but I just don't think people don't go to movies for spoilers. They're they're not there for the for that No, I uh, think yeah, the, I the think ending Marvel thing is, that, I think Marvel is different that way in the States at least. Right. You know, when Avengers when that came out, there was a huge spoiler. Half of the Avengers died. Right. That was the big spoiler, and that's what everybody waited on. And they don't look at Facebook. They don't look at Twitter. They can't. Like right, Brandon right. didn't want to have anything to do with it. And he was pissed off that I read it. I'm like, sorry, I got to do show prep for the show. I saw what the spoiler is. And I read about it. Yeah. I mean, that's like me watching Project Runway. I don't want to know who gets sent home. I want to be surprised. I, I like to watch it the next day. So don't tell me I stay off Twitter. <laughs> it's the only show I care about. Don't tell me who gets sent home. Don't tell me who gets Star Baker or whatever it is when you Project Runway. <laughs> or Mask Singer. You don't want to know who the final mask is. No, I don't give a shit about Mask Singer because yeah. they have fucking Jenny McCarthy. They can go fuck themselves. Speaking of singing, you know when you drive yeah. around in a car and you sing and you sing yeah. really bad? Well, that's why I have the shower. I sing much better there. Okay, so you think you sing good, but real singers who drive around in a car and they're happy and they sing, uh-huh. it's kind of funny when they turn the phone on themselves. So Mariah Formica from Plush, from Plush, one of our favorite rock bands, is driving around. She's in a good mood. She wants to sing some Aretha. And usually okay. you're going to look stupid singing any Aretha Franklin song, no matter who you are. But she's doing it, and she's going to record it for us. And she says, happy Friday, by the way. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go away on the way back way. I didn't even know you, you couldn't have been too much more to take. I ain't not so kind, just I ain't no kind to quit the green. Oh, my God. They don't take too much time, you, because you want to do it to me. Wow. She's in her car. (laughs) Oh my gosh. She's like no auto tune. She's not on the stage. She's driving in her car by herself. Going through the Wendy's drive thru. (laughs) (laughs) It's 
That's amazing. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, but that's be. how you can tell if you're like a real singer and a good singer. If you can do that, if you're just sort of like screwing around in your car on a Friday, I, I, I'm sorry. You are. That's next level shit. And you pick that there. song by that singer to sing in your car and you say, hey, I'm going to record this and get 300 million likes on, right. <laughs> on TikTok. That's a hard song to sing, even for good singers. And she nailed it. She's so driving? natural. She's not even pulled over. She's driving. right. She's <laughs> driving. Concert and other things. You know, speaking of music, this is I thought this was a really interesting story today. So um, Billboard Hot 100 Australia, usually similar to Billboard Hot 100 US. Mm-hmm. You know, we share a lot of the same music, share a lot of the same artists, Australian artists. British artists, American artists, like it's all, you know, it's all pretty much they have a couple of people we don't have and we have a couple of people they don't have, but not really. OK, it's sort of weird right now because pop music is competing with Christmas music, as you know, and they rank music for the Billboard Hot 100 by radio airplay. Mm-hmm. So in the U.S., number one is Adele, Easy on Me. Of course. Number two is Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas. No, of course. No, of course, because it's radio airplay. Right. And it's and that's Christmas all music radio time. is playing right now. Right, right. Uh, number three is Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber's Stay. Smash. Yes, total smash. But then it's like Jingle Bell Rock, SZA, and Little Nas X, and then like Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift and normal stuff. Mm. Okay. In Australia, it's a little bit different than the U.S. at the moment. They also have Adele as number one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm down with that. Number two, they have Elton John and Dua Lipa, Cold Heart, which should be higher on our charts, but for some reason it isn't, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, same number three, Kid Leroy, Justin Bieber, Stay. Same, same, you know. Now, today we learned that normally they had Taylor Swift or Mariah Carey coming up next. They have both been knocked off the top five. By who? Was it Olivia Rodrigo? No. Mariah Carey. The new Ed Sheeran? Right. No, not quite. Instead, it was this. Can you play what I sent you? Yeah. This is called Songs of Disappearance. It's from Bird Life Australia, which is the nation's largest bird conservation organization. And you're listening to... The bird songs of 53 of Australia's most threatened bird species. And people this, buy this and listen to this? This has huge radio airplay. This album has It can't not, have any radio airplay. You would turn this, the radio off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this radio station's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this? This is the Yule log on radio. <laughs> well, they preface it by explaining that it's it was put together over the course of 30 years by wildlife sound recording artist Dave Stewart. This album has displaced Taylor Swift's Red Album, Taylor's version, you know, right. obviously. It has surpassed ABBA. And The weekend in becoming the first album of its kind to be in the top five of Australia's music charts. This has got to piss The weekend off. You know, he yeah. spends all this time writing music in the studio, building his brand, and then birds beat you. <laughs> yeah. How do you compete with birds? Somebody's got to remix this. Then it's going to be huger. And I hate to say it like this, but it's true. Sorry, birds. This is number one with a bullet. <laughs> Oh, that is wrong. This is the worst thing. I I can't stand birds. You know what? When you when you think about this, this is why it's so popular because this is back when birds existed, and birds are really robots now. Oh, I'm not going through that down and this road again with you. The birds aren't, aren't real. real. Birds aren't no, real. That's it. why this. It's like retro that you can hear what birds used to sound like but now they're not around anymore because they're all drones birds aren't real dot com and i think that the songs of disappearance from bird life australia i think the percentage of the money or if not all of it goes towards the 
bird life australia to, to help the birds to to make sure they don't become extinct see and the name of the album is songs of disappearance see because the birds disappeared because they were replaced by drones okay that's not true at all don't listen to him <laughs> birds aren't real.com do your own research you don't have to listen to me you can go to your own research i was out making show business connections it's the cooper and anthony show got a game for you okay okay this game is called florida or china Ooh, okay 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 yes yeah, so you know how whenever we talk about like weird news stories of the day or some like stupid criminal kind of thing it's always like either a florida man or it's somebody in china because they have a billion people so people are going to mess up and do crazy things so i'm going to tell you the story i'll tell you the the headline you tell me did it happen in florida or did it happen in china okay okay number one Man breaks into home to cook breakfast, tells owners, go back to sleep. I got this. That is Florida. It is Florida. Mm -hmm. A 19 year old Marine broke into a home in Tampa to cook breakfast. Surprise. He was very drunk. Mm. (laughs) The residents did not go back to sleep as he suggested. Instead, they called the cops and he was arrested. Yeah, that's a Florida thing. That's that can only happen in Tampa. Yeah, right. Definitely. Here's number two. Man's cheating pigeons win race by taking high speed train. That's China because that's Tampa doesn't or Florida doesn't have a high speed train. So that's got to be China. Very good. In Shanghai, China, the pigeons owner smuggled them onto a bullet train to cheat during a race. <laughs> where the winner gets about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but they got caught and they didn't win. That's kind of brilliant, though. <laughs> <laughs> My bird is faster in years. Uh-uh. They, they, they proved it. Right. All right. Number three, a man suspected of using private plane to draw giant radar penis. (laughs) Florida. (laughs) (laughs) Because there's no giant penis in China. (laughs) 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 There's only a giant penis. (laughs) You know, you've heard uh, all all the rumors, so it can't be a giant (laughs) penis in, in China. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know if any of that's true, but you you happen to be right. It is Florida. It's Kissimmee, Florida. A board pilot who worked for one of those tracking apps flew in the shape of a penis. But mm-hmm. The app was live. So when you see the tracking, it's this big, giant penis <laughs> over Kissimmee, Florida. Yeah. Uh, here's, the, here's the next one. Man charged with assault with a deadly weapon after throwing an animal through a fast food window. Um, it's got to be China. This one's Florida. It's Florida. Oh, come on, it Florida. Uh-huh. What kind a of Florida, animal? <laughs> a Florida man named Joshua James was arrested and charged with assault with a deadly weapon without intent after throwing an alligator through a Wendy's drive through window. Why would you? <laughs> well, okay a why do you have an alligator in your car <laughs> b why would you throw the alligator at the the worker at mcdonald's well it was wendy's and uh, wendy's. well he was also charged with illegally possess possessing an alligator by the way <laughs> so uh, i think in, it was a, it was supposed to be in lieu of payment or it was like they gave him his food he didn't want to pay or he was like you know sick him fido mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing this pet alligator. I think when he was driving away, they said, see you later, alligator. And <laughs> <laughs> he said, after he took it all, literally. crocodile and threw it. <laughs> In a wild crocodile, boom. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me to throw them at it. I don't know. <laughs> they were egging me on. Uh, here's the next one. A man tired of waiting in hospital steals ambulance and drives home. <sighs> China. It feels like it would be China because there's so many people you would think in an emergency room, you're waiting for hours. That was also Florida. <sighs> and I, I was we'll going to say we'll Florida because there's only bicycles in China. <laughs> no, there's cars in China. Eh, uh, we're going back to Tampa again. No, a man fuck. named <laughs> Danny Kuzneski was drunk and suicidal. So his neighbors brought him to the hospital to have him committed. But he got tired of waiting for the doctor to come in and evaluate him. So he stole an ambulance. And drove himself back home. <laughs> Did he park in the driveway? <laughs> he parked. 
He actually parked in his neighbor's driveway thinking that Smart. they would suspect the neighbor. <laughs> He's not crazy then. <laughs> you shouldn't commit him right, because exactly. the crazy one would have pulled in his own driveway. He was smart enough to blame it on the neighbor. Exactly. Sanest thing he's done all year. <laughs> How about this one? Son keys BMW in a showroom to force his father to buy it for him. I don't think there's a BMW showroom in China. So I'm going to say Florida. It is China. It is China. huh? It is China. A 22 year old dude was seen on surveillance camera scratching a brand new blue BMW with oh. his keys. He just got his license. He wanted his dad to buy him the car. He ended up being detained by police. Instead. He wrote on it. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you claim the car, son. <laughs> you have to give me a discount. This car's all scratched up. Yeah, I don't. Can you at least. Knock 10 bucks off. I mean, look, it <laughs> looks like crap. I got to get a new paint job. I have this buffed out. Like, it cost me some money here. Uh, okay, here's one. Man breaks into jail to visit his friends. Florida. Of course, it's yeah, Florida. Yeah, that only yeah. can be Florida. Yeah, a pa- uh, Patrick Rempe, a 24-year-old dude from Florida, was arrested for ramming his car into the front door of the local jail in his small town. He admitted he was high on Flaca. He the wanted hell to see that? his fr- I don't know. It's something. Okay. He he wanted to see his friend who was incarcerated in that jail. He succeeded because now he's in there with him. Is Flaca only a Florida thing? Is that why they call it Flaca? It's probably like, uh, what's that one? Like Spice or something like that. Stavia, Stevia. St- what was that one? No, that that's was- what they put in Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's Stevia. <laughs> that's not what they put in drugs. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what Flaca is, but I looked it up on the. I've uh, heard of Waka Flaka Flame, but <laughs> uh, is that where he got his name from? Maybe, maybe. Okay. Okay, so it's on the uh, Department of Education. Depart- sorry, Department the DEA. Okay. The, they, the drug they know enforcement. About Flaka. The drug enforcement people. Yeah, Flaka. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? It's a dangerous drug similar to bath salt. It's a bath salt. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's generic bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't afford bl- bath salts, here's uh, Flaca. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the um, cheery A's of instead of Cheerios. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> man, man stabs tourist despite having no arms. The, is China, that Florida, or is that China? That's got to be China. It's also Florida. <laughs> I'm getting none of these right. What's wrong with Florida? He had no arms. How did he stab him? A homeless man with no arms in Miami. Uh, 46-year-old Jonathan Crenshaw held a pair of scissors with his feet. And he stabbed a 22-year-old guy named Cesar Carano. Why? He said it was self-defense. Turns out the 22-year-old tourist was only asking for directions. He could not run him. He had a knife in his foot. <laughs> I mean, how fast are you going to run? I know. Well, it turns out the homeless man is a painter and he paints with his feet. So his feet are pretty good. Like he uses them like hands. So he's pretty. You can still outrun him if he's holding something in his foot because he's going to have to hop. Yeah, that's true. And and you you should be able to. uh, Okay. Good point. Uh, I got two more for you. Man arrested just to avoid girlfriend asking why he won't marry her. China. That is China. Yes. Mm -hmm. Seeking a place to get away from his girlfriend's incessant demands to get married. A thief in Shanghai told police he wanted to get arrested. And that's why he decided to steal a bunch of tech stuff. He actually succeeded mostly because the girlfriend said she didn't want to marry a thief. But she would, even though he's a thief, she probably still, you going to marry me? When you going to marry me? When you going to marry me? The cow, the milk, the thing, whatever the hell it, that is. <laughs> right. She probably drives him nuts. <laughs> Except it's in China, and so it's in Chinese. So Right. So it's a yeah. poor guy. I don't think it's a cow and a milk, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and here's the final one. A man who wandered off drunk joined a search party for himself. That's Florida. That's a trick question. I loved this story so much. I wanted to wedge it in. It's not Florida. It's not China. This happened in Turkey. You got to hear this story. A 51-year-old Turkish man was out drinking with a friend. They were drinking in the forest and getting, he got so drunk 
and his friends like left and he was there by himself drinking. So he started to try to walk home and he realized he was too drunk. He couldn't find his way. So he kind of did like a Goldilocks thing where he found an abandoned house. He breaks into the house just to sleep and eat their porridge, basically. But now he's, you know, he's passed out in this house. And when you're that drunk, hours pass. He doesn't come home. His wife is worried about him. She waits 24 hours. She calls the police. They send out a search team. The guy finally comes to eat something, takes a shower, decides he's going to head home, opens the door, and he sees the search team. He's like, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, we're searching for a missing man. He's like, great, I'll, I'll join. <laughs> he just joins in. And he's just walking around. He's just walking <laughs> along with everybody. Like? <laughs> what's, the guy, what's the guy look like? He's, he's like Let five, nine, picture. brown. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, let's look. Come on. I think he's over here. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously, if somebody obviously recognized him and said, uh, yeah, hi, it's you. We're looking for you, idiot. I <laughs> found me. I'm right here. <laughs> Do I get a reward? I found me. <laughs> we now return you to our main studio. It's the Cooper and Anthony show. Tell me if this is good parenting or bad parenting. OK. We have a very large family, four kids. Our 15 year old spent 500 bucks on Fortnite skins. So I guess Fortnite is a game. You can buy skins for the game, the back of the game. And right. he spent 500 bucks. This kept hitting, yes, okay, buy, 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 buy. Okay. So his parents. How old's the kid? Wait, may I again, how old the kid, 15. kid is? 15. Okay. So at 15, you know better. If they say this Fortnite skin is 10 bucks, you, you know what 10 bucks is if you're 15. Right. So they have four kids. They said, we're not getting this child anything for Christmas. Because he char- he, he's, he, we have to pay the 500 bucks. That's oh. his Christmas present. But the other children are going to be <laughs> downstairs Christmas morning opening presents. He ain't getting nothing. Okay. Let me start with telling you this. Um, there's a lot Fortnite skins. There's a, a lot of characters and outfits on this list. So it's not like you're just going to get one. It's I mean, it's not it's not unlike when you were a kid and you would collect Star Wars toys. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So instead of collecting stores, toys, you collect the skins. So it's kind of the same thing. It's you're not just going to get Luke Skywalker. You know, you need everybody. You need the whole the whole crew of people. So right. I, I understand. I understand why the kid did it. So if you don't understand what a Fortnite skin is, definitely Google it and look it up, especially if you're a parent. You, you should know what it is because there's literally hundreds of them. <laughs> but you can't sit there and click buy, 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 buy. You have to figure it out. It's like if I'm playing Angry Birds and it says you want another bird, it's going to be nine ninety five, And I hit yes. I should know that that's coming out of my bank account. Right. And at 15, you kind of know what money is. But is that a good punishment that he's going to go downstairs Christmas morning and nothing is going to be there? I don't think it's this kid's fault. He's only 15. You know, I mean, 15. Yes, you can form sentences and you could understand. You and I had jobs at 15. So what well, we did, that's true. We did have jobs. We at knew 15. what money we, we, was. We worked for it at 15. We were unusual kids. Most of my friends didn't have jobs at 15. Actually, none of my friends had jobs. I was like one of the only ones. I had like one other friend, maybe. But you and I are very unusual for 15 year olds. I mean, I actually got a fake ID because they wouldn't hire you in my town until you were 16. So I got a fake ID to say I was older. <laughs> so I could drink. Work. <laughs> Not to, to drink. So, to, so I can work. Yeah. I was actually 14 and a half and I got something that said I was 16 so I can get a job. Um, So you and I are very different like that. But it's not that the kid doesn't understand what money is. You have to remember that 15, your frontal lobe is still not fully developed. You don't really grasp the consequences of your actions. And the whole thing about Fortnite is it's designed to get you into it and get you to want to collect these skins. Like I said, there's hundreds of them. He's not the only kid. The fact that he only spent $500 shows a little bit of restraint on his part, in my opinion. Um, but 
his parents should not have given him a credit card. The parents yeah. should not have allowed him. This is 100 percent on the parents, not on him. And it is really, really cruel and bad parenting to punish him by not letting him participate in Christmas like the rest of his family. Find another way to punish him. Have a talk with him. Take his credit card away. Take his take Fortnite away from him for a week. Like those are better consequences. But not giving him a Christmas gift when his brothers and sisters are getting Christmas gifts. It's I think that's really, really cruel. Well, my oldest, when I had a computer, when he was like four and he Mm -hmm. jumped off the the couch and jumped onto my laptop and broke it, I saved that laptop so he could take it to college with him because you got to learn. You got to learn. That's adorable. You thought either one of your kids would be going to college. <laughs> that's, see, that's and that's the bad thing is they didn't go. So no, I know. Well, they're your kids. They would never go to college. Joke. That's so funny. I kept that. I, I kept that computer for for ten years, hoping that it would follow him to college. <laughs> never went. He showed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I tried to do that. Yeah. I d- I don't think they should keep Christmas away from the kid. No, that's really, really mean. I mean, just, you know, just don't buy him as expensive a gift, maybe, if you're feeling like bitter, but you can't give the kid nothing. Mm -hmm. But I I understand. Okay. But then on the other hand, you as a parent, here's, I don't know how kids are with siblings. I was an only child. So if I know that my three sisters, if we all got dresses and my dress, okay, how about this? This is exactly the analogy I want to use. I have three sisters. The four of us have asked for a specific brand of dress for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's say um, Gucci. Know, just Gucci. We can't afford Gucci. Juicy Couture. <laughs> okay. Get the gap. I don't care. Um, but I'm the youngest and I'm still growing. My sisters are older and whatever size they are, they're probably going to be for a few more years. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one who's still growing. So I'm going to need the size 6X, the child size. Whereas my siblings are wearing extra small, small, large, whatever sizes they are. So my parents spend less money on me than on my siblings because I'm still growing. They don't get me the expensive version. They get me the cheap version that looks like the expensive version because I'm still growing. Right. I would be very bitter about that. I'd be very angry. It's not it's not my fault that I'm the youngest. It's not my fault that I'm smaller. And your sisters are going to make fun of you that you got well, to make fun one. of me. They no, no I, maybe, they do. Maybe. They do. Brothers and sisters are v- oh, horrible. Oh, oh horrible. Okay. And, okay. So they're going to make yeah. fun of me also on top of it all. But, but I think I would feel a little lesser. Like if I know that that dress was a hundred dollars and mine was 25 and they spent a hundred dollars on each one of my sisters and only 25 on me, I would think on some level that has something to do with, how much they love me and how much they, how they feel about me. That would make me feel bad. Yeah. It could change your whole life. That could, right. ch- that could take you down a whole different road later in life. Right. Okay. So in that vein, the kid that spent $500, the other three siblings didn't get to spend $500. So do you think that they're going to be resentful? They're going to be jealous. Do you think that's going to be, why can't I spend $500? Right. You better get me a Christmas present worth $600 then, or you love him more. That's what I'm saying. So the fact that the kid got away with spending $500, what do you think about that as a father? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I would love to say you're not getting anything for Christmas and they are, and you're just going to, but I I would break down and buy him something, you know, and it's just a a family thing. We're going to have to get over. We're going to all discuss it as a family and we'll figure it out. But I don't know. That's, that's right. you get, you get nothing for Christmas and his response is, I don't care. We're Jewish. <laughs> You're not getting anything for eight days. Shut up and listen. Shut your bitch ass mouth. It's the Cooper and Anthony show. Now, if you lived in North Korea, did you know in North Korea for the next 11 days, you cannot laugh, drink or shop. Okay, I can go without laughing and drinking, but shopping for anything. Can I get food? I, I don't know. You can't do anything because they're Kim Jong Il, the first Kim or the second of the Kim 
dynasty he died and it's 17 years uh since his death so around his death for 11 days you can't laugh drink or shop Oh, I see. They celebrate like a like a, I don't know why eleven days. It must have that number must have some significance in North Korea. But so so they basically memorialize him by staying in mourning for those eleven days. Yeah, and he can't laugh. Well, I don't know that they're doing much laughing. It is North Korea. It's not a very funny place to be. So I want to see if you can do it. If you can go eleven seconds and not laugh. So I'm going to tell you jokes, and we'll see if you can live in North Korea. Okay, I'm ready to see if I can live in North Korea. Go ahead. Hey, Cooper, why did the tomato blush? Why? Because it saw the salad dressing. Hey, Cooper. Wait, hang on. Because it saw the salad dressing. You didn't even deliver that punchline. It saw the salad dressing. It saw the salad dressing. (sighs) Hey, Cooper. Yes, Anthony. (laughs) Did you hear about the famous pickle? (sighs) No, I have not. He was a big dill. This is easy to not laugh at so far. Why did the banana go to the hospital? Um, Something about not being appealing. He was peeling really bad. I was close. Why did the math book look so sad? Hmm, I don't know, Anthony. Why did the math book look so sad? Because of all of its problems actually a pretty good joke (laughs) come on none of these (sighs) what is the most terrifying word in nuclear physics why are you giving me nuclear physics jokes what what is the most terrifying word i don't know explosion oops i don't get it oops (laughs) i I think i don't you gotta know more about nuclear physics to understand why that's funny you want, you want to find another topic, maybe? Or you make me laugh at another topic. <laughs> Why is the baseball stadium always cold? Uh, I don't know. Why? Because it's full of fans. Well, not, not really, because there's no one really goes to baseball anymore. You should see, like, the Mets, there's nobody there. Why is the sand wet? Why is the sand wet? Yeah. I don't know, something like the ocean licked it or something? Because the seaweed. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) (laughs) I gotcha. (laughs) Seaweed. (laughs) Okay, that one's good. (laughs) You got me on that one. Okay. Okay, I I, I definitely can't live in North Korea. (laughs) Take this back. Back. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. I um, finally got copies of my own book, which took them forever. What's going on over there? Uh, I finally got copies of my own book. Right. And I gave each one of you a copy and put a rubber band around it, like, because I didn't have a lock. I didn't know how, I, there's no chastity belt for books. So I didn't know however else to keep it. So, right, I, exactly. Thank you. And I put a rubber band around it because I wanted to surprise you with something tonight on the air. Now, Anthony, I think you can read. I know that you I don't. I can read. Shut I know up. that you don't read. So I, don't I will. Read. I will give the job to Chad Bauer. Okay. So, Chad, if you can open up can your book. Can we open book. it now? Yes, you can open it now. And, uh, it's a book. It's a giant picture there, of Cooper on the cover. Is, that's true. Is, is there money in it? Is no, that why we can't open it? Chad, turn to page 246. Look at that. 246? There's, dude, there's, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, eight one hundred dollars bills in my book. <laughs> Shh. Chad. Oh, sorry. What page? Uh, 246. That's the last page. Would you relax? What's your problem? Turn to page 246. Are you there, Chad? Uh, yes. Okay. Um. In the middle of that paragraph, start with reading Being a Woman. i got to give him music first. These are the acknowledgments. Just so you know, this is the acknowledgment section of the book. <clears throat> being, being a woman of achievement, I am aware that it can be a handful for one husband, so I have three surrogates to ease his burden. My radio wingmen, Anthony Michaels and Chad Bauer, as well as my friend and partner in crime, Kirk Sterland. Special thanks to my hardworking publicists at Susan Blonde, Inc., Liza, Jamie, and Lisa, and my long-suffering agent, Maura Teitelbaum. Oh, and speaking of suffering, I should probably thank my parents, Sandy and Bob Durrell, mm-hmm. and my wonderful, supporting, loving husband, Sean Lee. I love you all. 
Now, Chad, what was one of your things you wanted to do before you died? Be in a book. You You're in be, a book. You wow. want to be thanked in a book. Right, because I've been thanked uh, on CDs. You've been thanked on CDs, uh huh. Right, but never in a book. I know. I've, and, and I've been in magazines. You've been thanked in mag. Right, you've been in magazines. Right. You said, because we we talked about this last year at some point. Right. What kind of things you want to do before you die? And one of the things on your list, and this book wasn't. You didn't even know about this because this book was already at the publisher. Right. Um, and you said, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I wasn't sure whether you were hinting, but I, I, I gleaned from your conversation that you were not hinting. You were saying for sure what you wanted was to be thanked in a book. Right. Not even knowing at that time you'd already been thanked in a book, but no, the book no wasn't clue. out yet. So the book is now officially out, The Cult of Perfection, and wow. you've been thanked. Why, well, thank you. Thank you for thanking me. And I bet Anthony's never been thanked in a book. Or I've he never been he, thanked. He wouldn't know if, it, I, if he had. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't know, it's true. This if he is read kind of, books. Is this going to be in, like, real bookstores? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's in Barnes & Noble. It's in um, Joseph Beth Booksellers, Borders, so, any, so any so place can, where they sell books. So I can go there when I get a coffee and, and just walk around and go, look, that's me. That's my name in a book. Right. Open up to page 246. Anytime you go into any bookstore that carries the cult of perfection. Now, look, Chad, the, the book is, when you take the cover off, uh-huh. it looks much better. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just some big blue hardcover. Right, right. Well, I, I will say one thing about this book. Um, I didn't choose the picture on the cover. I had nothing to do with it, as a matter of fact. The big boss was upset today. He was? Yeah, he saw the book and he said, how can you take a picture of Cooper and not show her shoes? Yeah, the, the the picture on the cover of the book is, don't ask me why it's of me. I don't know why I'm on the cover of a book. It makes no sense whatsoever. But for some reason, I am. Uh, and they cut me off at the shins. Mm-hmm. And you guys were there that day. You were there when we took this picture. I was wearing a fabulous pair of shoes that day. Right. You can't you, see them, no. You'd never know it. No. You could be barefoot in this picture. Y- you know how people put things up in the studio? Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, look what I did. Here. I'm going to put up my page. <laughs> right on the... <laughs> you did not just tear that page out of that book. <laughs> right on the bulletin board. Nice. Oh, Good job. Make oh, sure to highlight our names. Here's oh, a highlighter. Oh, God. Here's a highlighter. And you just ripped that right... You didn't even... And the thing is, when you, you didn't even rip it all the way. There's still, like, pieces hanging. Should I highlight it, Chad? Yes. Oh, okay, highlight all right, well, at least highlights. People know why there's a half-ripped a- page. My name Anthony Michaels. Okay. I'm going to write Heidi in since, since you didn't put Heidi in. Well, I didn't right. know her yet. Heidi. Okay. Heidi, I apologize for and not I'll putting you in, but I didn't know Heidi you then. I understand. Her. And then I'll put that. Right I'll, I'll live. Right. On the board. Anthony, could what? you at least cut it out neatly? Now you have this, like, it looks like a torn piece of paper that you picked up off the floor. When I when I have to light my fire later, I'll rip out more. I see that. Oh, there's an inscription. Did you read like, in the front? There's an inscription in the front too, Anthony. I gotta go to the bathroom. Why don't off. you you can tear that page I'll... off and tape that up too? Oh, right no! <laughs> yeah, there's. Would you stop tearing pages out of my book. So there's the first page with his his inscription, and then our page with our names on it. Both are now uh, tacked up on our it, board. Is my name on any other page? No, I'm gonna say no. Chad, because I really it. don't want you to start tearing out pages of the book. Give me a page to rip out, there Chad. In, there's no index. Okay. Yeah, there's so an index. Of course there is. There's a you know a table of contents. No, I'm mean. an index or a list. Oh, there's no index. No, no, I got no index. There's uh, no footnotes. No, no footnotes. Right. I'll so rip out that page. No, don't, no, <laughs> stop ripping pages out of my book. <laughs> oh my God, Anthony, it's a nice hardcover book, and it's not cheap. Well, it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. It didn't cost me anything. Twenty four ninety five. But I bet you can get it cheaper than that on Amazon. Oh, you got, on Amazon already, you can get it cheaper. I wonder if it's on eBay already. Oh, it's got to be on eBay. Not yet. I don't think anybody's. I'm sure the galley is on eBay. Well, we know one person had it because they called yesterday. That's true, but so he had the hardcover. No, but he got it off of Amazon. He got the actual book book. Oh, I can't believe you're sitting there ripping pages out of my book. I'm not ripping mine. No, you're not. Did you see your inscription? Yes. Chad, one more thing to cross what, off what your page? list. It's the one you already ripped out. This, this, this oh. is the title page. You have an inscription on yours, too. Did you read it? Yeah. It's up on the bulletin board. Oh, is it? Yeah. So Let me just, look. It's the one you just ripped out. No, he ripped out the other thing. He didn't. Rip no, out he ripped his... out both of them. Oh, he ripped his inscription too. <laughs> yeah. Did you at least that, read it? Because that had his name on it too. Oh, I Anthony. Didn't even see it. Stop Did ripping you... pages out of the book. You should tell me these things. Oh, this what this will explain why I'm such a pain in the ass. 
<laughs> is that what it says? That's yeah. what I wrote to him. The front page. I didn't tear that one out yet. No, you didn't. <laughs> Stop tearing pages out. I got to put that one on the board, too. No, please. Mandy and Potter need to see oh, that one. Oh, God. <laughs> They're not going to understand the inscription? <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe you just tore all those pages out of my book. I'll get another one. I don't even have another one. Yeah, we'll get it on eBay for like $2. Yeah, you're going to have to do that. Oh, my gosh. I'm having a heart attack. Yeah, this one, unlike your <laughs> your other one, was a was a dating book, but this one actually has some useful information for everybody. Yeah, this is actually a real book. This is actually, can I tell you what it's about? Can can we have people call and I'll give them pages? <laughs> if you want to be caller seven now, I'll give you page one forty five. How about this? Why don't you do this? Uh -huh. Why don't you have them call and pick a number, and that's the next page you can rip out. For them. Sweet, <laughs> give the number out. Eight seven seven six Cooper. <laughs> Just call and give Anthony a, a number between, let's see, where does it start? It's between 9, nine and, and 247. 247, and I'll rip them all out. Yeah, and that's what he's going to rip out and put up on the... It'd be funny to put up as like non sequitur, because the other radio shows would be like, what is this? No, I'm going to plaster it all over the place. Oh, you are? Yeah, and, and send out an email. If you would like to read Cooper's book, go to the studio. And put the name <laughs> of the person and the page. So if you call... Yeah, just tape we'll them up your... page by page. we got to... <laughs> Pretty big wall in here. Yeah, so so call eight seven seven six Cooper. Give us a number between nine and two forty seven, and we'll put your name on the page that we've ripped out for okay. you. Okay. Because you've already ripped a bunch out. You might as well just. Oh, I am having a heart attack, but I can't believe you're doing that to this book. <laughs> okay, Chip, what's what page do you want? I gotta have page number twenty one. Okay. That's my okay, birthday give... coming up soon. So. Okay. What's on that page, Shad? Uh, it's in the Defining Overachiever chapter. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's so not me. <laughs> all, right, all right, rip that one out. Okay, I'll write Chip on that one. Yeah, write Chip on that one. Yeah. Now, on that one, yeah, he's Chip, you, you took out the page called The Gifted Overachiever. Oh, definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Chip. Well, that's no why problem. we're going to dedicate it to you, Chip. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Hey, Marty. Hey, Cooper. Now, what page would you like us to rip out for you? Page 44. Okay. 44, Chad. Find that page okay. for me. On Read page it to me. 44, right. oh, Marty. It's uh, part of the, the effect on your home and family life. It has to do with you own an artsy townhouse in an up-and-coming neighborhood. Ooh, okay. Wow. Marty, would you like me to rip it slow or fast? Very fast. <laughs> Oops, but, but half the page is still in the book. No, okay. you didn't even get the whole page out. Part of 44, Marty. That's yeah, make going. sure you put, put Marty's Marty name on there. Marty 44. Thank you, Marty brother. For, thank you. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> okay, so Marty now owns page 44. Nobody's right. picked a page because there's lots of, like, uh, bullet points and what do you call them, sidebars? Yeah, the sidebars. That are in blueprints. Like, the regular book is in black print, and then the sidebars and the, and the like, bullet points are in blueprint. Exactly. Okay, who wants page number 77 ripped? Yes, I do. <laughs> and what's your name so we can put a name on it? Now, who you think you see? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ken. Okay, and, well, I, and I want to know what caliber, what caliber them bullet points are. <laughs> <laughs> what's on 77 there, Chad? That's part of the effect on your health chapter of the hey, cult of perfection. Perfect. And it's the good. Yeah, you and as a matter of fact, Ken, acute <laughs> stress. A, actually, there's a bullet point on your page, Ken. Yeah, there's a bullet fine. point. You never tell me what caliber it was. Ken, would you like it ripped slow or fast? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pick one. Well, uh, I guess a fox. Uh, how about how about slow and easy, just like me? Oh, oh God, I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. Well, if I do it slow, I can almost get the whole page. At least you got the whole page. There we go. Yeah. Okay, Ken. At least this time you got the whole Ken page. Ken gets Can you answer me a question? Yes. If I go buy one of these here books that you didn't send me. Yeah. Would you scribble graph it for me? <laughs> of course I'll scribble graph it for you. Absolutely <laughs> I'll you, scribble Ken. graph it. Thank you. 77 going to Ken. Now on now page 77, it says, I'll give you like one of the bullet points that Ken now gets. Acute right. stress actually helps your immune system respond better to infection. It builds up your immunity while helping you stave off boredom. And that's, I believe, a 45 caliber bullet point. That really and, is. And Hollow you, point. And if you're in the building right now and you want to read that page, come into the studio and just look up on the On, on the, the wall. wall. Yeah. It's got Ken's name on it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, hi, Jamie. Jimmy. Hey, oh, Jimmy. Oh, sorry. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, now. So what page are we ripping out for you? I want 114. Okay. 114. Oh, uh oh, you have to pick another one. That one's blank. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, I get the blank. That's the, that's the end of it. It's between chapters, and apparently the chapter has to start on a right-hand 
right side page and it's a left side page and it's just completely blank. Sorry. Mm, well, I'll rip that out anyway for you. No, <laughs> we don't need it. It's blank. What do we need that yeah, for? I guess that's true. Although 113 on the other side does have some writing. Yeah, on 113. It. What, what's the beginning of the chapter then? Uh, the next page is the beginning of the effect on your future chapter of the well, Cult of sounds, Perfection by Cooper Lawrence. That sounds great. Slow or fast? Uh, fast. There you go. Ouch! Uh, like got, a band aid. He got two pri- pages for the price of one. Yeah, really. You got. He got so a blank page. He got. Well, he got the end of chapter four. Chapter five. Right. No, and the end of chapter four and the beginning of chapter five. And a blank. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, you're right because it's right. chapter six. Yeah. And actually, everybody's getting two pages because they have a front and a back. That's very. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, now Joseph. The, the radio. Hey, Joseph. Huh. Now, what page do you want Anthony to rip off for you? The cover. Oh, the cover. oh we can't Joseph do, we can't do that. The ho- oh. You can. You can take the cover off. Yeah, i got to cut it a little bit first. Yeah. Well, no, because it, it's a hard don't cover. Cut, don't cut it. No, i got to start it because You're it's... A man. I, you can rip... Yeah, be a man. Joseph says okay. be a man. Rip it off. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just do. crumple it like this. <gasps> okay. There we go. It's like ripping it. a phone book. He's crumpling my face because you know my face. He's he left the rest of it. He give it. He gave a really good crumple to my face. All right, write Joseph's name on that because okay, that's Joseph Joseph's got, page. Got the cover and put that up on the board. This is great. They're gonna come in here tomorrow morning and be like, <laughs> "What the? What is all over this wall?" Ten seventy seven. Why are there names on Chip this? Chip twenty one. What is all this about? <laughs> hey, Lori. Yes. Oh, hey there. Hey. So, um, you know, I realized first I thought writing a book would be good for information, but it's actually much more fun than I thought it, it was going like to be. You, hey, it sounds like you guys are having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so, what page are you going to claim your your stakes to? Give me one eighty. Okay, one eighty. All right, Chad. What's on one eight? One eighty. That's the one eighty is in the uh, influence of self esteem chapter. It's a section called the mastery mindset. Ooh. Alrighty then. You, you want it slow or fast? Oh, fast. Okay, here we go. Ah, nice. Yeah. Put All right. Make sure you put Lori's name on it in big Lori. letters. Yep, there Lori. we go. We got it up there. You're famous now. That's good. Hey, Dara. Hey, Cooper. <laughs> so now, what what section of my book should we re- uh, rip out for you? What page would you like? I must have twelve. Ooh, that's wow. a good one because it has it's a a sidebar page. Mm-hmm. It's part of the defining overachiever chapter, and it's a little sidebar. Tales from the treadmill featuring Alexandra, Ooh. who's a corporate lawyer, Ooh. and she's an, also an overachiever. Slow or fast? Slow. I like it slow. <laughs> 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 it's easier to tear them out when they're when you do it slow. You don't. You don't. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Yeah. It sounds better too when you do it slow. Yeah. Now, Audrey, I just want to tell you something. I only got about five copies of this book, and three of them are in this room right now, and one of them is in pieces all over the place. Mm-hmm. I think this is great. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now, what what page should we rip out for you? What page would you like? One ninety three. Okay, 193 for Audrey. Write her name on it. All That's right. also a part of the influence of self-esteem chapter, and it has a little bullet point by it as well. That says, There is something to be said for a girl having some autonomy over her own life, even if she it means she fails sometimes. Ooh. You want That's it slow or fast? Fast. Hey, Christy. <laughs> You guys, you're killing me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what are you doing? Thank you. They're ripping my book. We're having fun with her book. Don't say we. Anthony is ripping <laughs> your book. Anthony. Well, you know, you, you're you you're complicit in I it. I have nothing to do with it. I'm I'm cherishing my copy that's, that's not true. ripped. You are. you are. Christy, look I at all these I pages. I there with you. Oh, my gosh. I would be, I don't know. And I just wrote my own book and had it published. Can you send it to me? No. <laughs> and you guys share a studio with Matt and Ramona? Uh-huh. Bandy just cleans the studio. <laughs> Welcome, boy. Well, I got news for him. Yeah. It's dirty again. <laughs> it's dirty again. Thank you, Christy. Thank send you, Send me your book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please send us your yeah, book. We'll read Christy's book tomorrow. <laughs> That's what we're going to do with every book. That yeah. Comes <laughs> yeah. If, you've, if you've written a book, send it to us. We'll rip it up on the exactly. air. <laughs> We'll rip it up for you. Because <laughs> we don't want you ripping it up alone at home. It's exactly. just sad if you do it like that. We're going right. to just start doing that with our authors that we interview. <laughs> we While should. we're talking to them in the background. Yeah. So what's your book about? <laughs> <laughs>